This video is for DeFi developers who want to take full advantage of the immutability of the blockchain, which has near limitless amount of data. I'll show you how to query log and filter historical blockchain events and their logs. This data can tell you exactly what happened in a given time or block range, like who minted what Uniswap liquidity, or who did swaps over a specific value on a pool. I'm Blockman, and I teach DeFi developers how to use Uniswap with code. If you want to learn how to use Uniswap fast, sign up for my Uniswap v3 masterclass. Link in the description. Now let's write some code. To query, filter, and parse logs, there's almost nothing that we need to import. All we need is ethers to read from the blockchain and .env because I've stored my infer URL as an environment variable. This is a helper function I've written which we'll skip for now, but we'll come back to it when we use this code. In our main function, which is async, start by creating a provider, which allows reading data from the Ethereum blockchain. Here I create a JSON RPC provider and pass in my infura URL using .env with process.env.infura URL. Because in the .env file I have my infura URL stored in a variable named infura URL in all caps. Next, specify the address of the contract we want to query events for. This is the address for a USDC ETH pool on Uniswap v3. Then add or import the ABI of the event on the contract we want to filter on. This contains the swap event, which emits an event from the pool contract every time a swap occurs, but you could query any other event that you like. And I've hard-coded this here, but it's also possible to import it from a Uniswap library or external file. Just ensure your ABI has the event you want to query, or the code is going to fail. Now let's build the filter, which determines what events are returned. But before we can build the filter, we need to construct the signature of the event that we want to query. And you could do it manually, but I wrote a function that extracts the signature from the ABI for us, which we call here, get event signature. Let's walk through this function really quick. This function takes the event name, which in our case is swap, the event that we want to query for, and the ABI of the contract, which must contain that event. We filter the ABI for this event because there could be a number of functions and events in the ABI. We collect the input types, and then we append the data together. So for example, the signature for a flash event emitted from Uniswap flash swaps looks like this, with the event name, and then the data types of the data that's logged with it. This together is the signature for the flash event. So here this returns the signature for the swap event. And I've logged that here just in case you are interested in seeing it. Now to the filter, which has four main attributes, though there are more that are optional to pass in. One, address, the address of the contract we want to query. And I'm passing in the address of the USDC ETH pool on Uniswap v3. Topics is a little bit more complicated. And this specifies which events on the contract we want to get logs for. But we can go deeper than just querying by contract function. We can also specify the from address, the to address, and any other data points on the event that's indexed. The first argument to topics is a hash of the event signature, and we built the signature above. So now we pass that to ethers.utils.id to build the hash for it. And each event is different, but in this case, the second optional argument here is the address for the sender, if we want to filter on that as well. The third argument, which is optional, would be the address of the recipient, and we can filter on that as well. And when we look at the ABI, you'll notice that some attributes are indexed and some are not. So we can only filter on index attributes. 
Next, we have the from block and the to block, which together allow setting a block range for the query. You can also pass the string latest to to block to get up until the current block, but the query will fail if you try to retrieve more than 10,000 event logs. So be careful and you may not be able to set too large of a range depending on how popular the contract and associated function is that you're querying. Now we call provider.getLogs and pass in our constructed filter. And that returns logs, but these logs are encoded, meaning they're not human readable. But we can build an interface object to decode the results. That's what I do here with new ethers.utils.interface and pass in the contract ABI. Then we loop over the results and decode each log with contract interface dot decode event log and pass in the event name and the data and topics from the log then log the results and i've specifically written this to log this event you'll need to modify this for other events or you could just console dot log the whole decoded log object but notice here that i've called to string on some of the attributes which you may have to do to make the data readable. Now let's run this in the terminal. And here we will see all the event logs and their data in the block range that we specified. Leave your tutorial requests, comments, and questions below. Like and subscribe if you're still watching, and I'll see you next time.